Imagine we have a building with multiple floors and we need to figure out the best way to move between them. What do you think would be the most practical and efficient way to do so? One of the most common solutions is a staircase. But what exactly is a staircase? The vertical part of a step is known as the riser, while the horizontal part is called the going. When you combine the riser and going, you get a step. Multiple steps in a sequence create a staircase. After the last step, it is better to design a landing. It's important to plan for the landing before triggering the stairs. The angle at which the staircase meets the horizon is called the pitch. To prevent falls, stair handrails are always included. These handrails run from the first step to the last step. Maintaining a consistent height of 90 cm throughout the entire staircase. For staircases with fewer than 5 steps, handrails are not necessary. To calculate the rise and going of the stairs, a specific formula is used as follows. The sum of twice the rise and the going of the stairs equals 60 cm. It is important to note that the going of the stairs should never be less than 25 cm according to this formula. For instance, if the going of the stairs is 30 cm, then the rise of the stairs will be 15 cm. For minimum and maximum use, the formula changes slightly. The sum of twice the rise and the going of the step should fall within the range of 55 to 70 cm. If the going of our stairs is 30 cm, then the rise of our stairs will fall between 12.5 and 20 cm. Adding these two numbers together and dividing by 2 yields 16.25, which represents the optimal height for the stairs. However, for practical purposes, it is recommended to consider using either 15 cm or 17 cm for your designs. In the design of a staircase, there are specific limitations to consider. The staircase should not consist of more than 18 steps in a straight path. It is advisable to include a landing after every 9 steps for better functionality. As a professional architect, it is essential to assign a number to each step during the design process. When examining a step closely, you may notice that the upper part of the step slightly protrudes beyond the stair itself. This protruding part is known as the nosing. Designed to prevent the back of the shoe from hitting the back of the stair while descending. The step's surface has two grooves designed to prevent people from slipping. When viewing a staircase from above, it is referred to as a top view or plan. The plan represents a vertical section that covers three quarters of the building's height. For example, in a three meter high building, the plan section would be two meters and 25 centimeters in height. In a plan drawing, steps higher than the plan's height are depicted with dashed lines. At the break point, Two parallel diagonal lines indicate where the break begins. This marking signifies that any part beyond it exceeds 2 meters in height, while any part before it is under 2 meters in height. To illustrate movement on the stairs, a line is drawn from the middle of the first step to the middle of the last step. We draw an arrow at the end of the line and one of these three symbols at the beginning of it. Always remember that the line's beginning is from the first step or the lowest height, and the line's end is on the last step or the highest height. This line is known as the path line of the staircase. If the path of our stairs is not straight and breaks, as shown in this example, a landing will be incorporated in the middle of the structure. The width of the landing should always be equal to or greater than the width of a step. Therefore, if the width of the landing is denoted as A and the width of the stairs is B, A must always be equal to or greater than B. It is essential to note that the width of the landing should never be less than 90 centimeters. To indicate the height of the stairs, a symbol called spot elevation is utilized in the plan. The base elevation code is always considered as 0.00. For instance, if we designate the first point of our stairs as the base code and our highest point reaches 360 cm, then the spot elevation code for the middle landing would be 180 cm. If our staircase comprises multiple sections, each segment is referred to as an arm. Occasionally, a small opening is created between these arms, known as the eye of the stair. Question. If the distance between two floors of a building is 400 centimeters or 4 meters, how many stairs will be needed? To calculate the number of steps needed, if the height between two floors is 400 centimeters and each step is 20 centimeters in height, we divide 400 by 20, resulting in 20 steps. Different types of stairs can be used in designs, such as straight or linear staircases. L-shaped staircases. U-shaped staircases. 
dog leg staircases, spiral staircases, and curved staircases. Additionally, there are more complex types of stairs, including the half spiral staircase and the three quarters turn staircase. To draw a half spiral staircase, start by drawing a half circle with a diameter of at least one meter. Continue the outline of the half circle. Offset the entire drawing by a desired width. Find the center of the half circle and draw the path line of the staircase. Mark the path every 30 centimeters and connect the points after the curve to the center of the half circle. For other details, follow the same steps as for a regular staircase. Once the drawing is done, erase any extra parts. To draw a three-quarters turn staircase, begin by sketching a square that encloses the entire staircase. Select two adjacent sides of the square as the primary sides of the staircase and draw the other two sides of the staircase using the desired width. Identify the path line of the staircase and mark it every 30 centimeters. Connect these marked points to the opposite corner and extend the line to the end. Erase any excess parts after completing the construction. I truly hope you found this tutorial helpful and informative. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on our latest videos.